Hi, uh, it's been a while since I've done a video on clock restoring, so uh, opportunity came about for me to restore one, or in fact it's more like a repair. So basically uh, this thing was one of the first clocks I restored uh, some time back and um, put it all together and it wasn't running quite the way I wanted to, took the mechanism out, dropped the bloody thing and went and broke the pivot on this little thing. This is part of the visible escapement and probably difficult to see on the camera there but there was a little pivot there and it snapped and uh, the two things I don't have are a lathe which is decent enough to drill in there and put another pivot in there and secondly most importantly um, what I don't have is a skill to be able to do that anyway so this clock has just sat there with the mechanism um, which was fully restored at the time um, serviced at the time and all complete and it's like it made me angry because I, I don't know how to I've had a go I do have a lathe but um, it's not a proper watchmaker's lathe it's a unimat with a watchmaker stock um, fitted to it but it's it's not the same thing as when you've got a proper watchmaker's lathe those things are far more accurate and yeah I tried drilling into this um, thing a couple of times and each time my drill bit snaps I don't think it's true dead center as I say I don't have the skill for it and that that's basically it and I dare say someone who knows what they're doing could probably do it on my lathe but not me so as I say this thing has just been sitting around for ages and this thing is like huge um, it measures across um, oh, 49 centimeters by just over 50 centimeters high it's a it's a giant this one and I love it it's such a nice clock lots of brass work on it again which I um, I seem to enjoy more when they've got a lot of shiny bits on them because I enjoy polishing up the shiny bits albeit that they've gone tarnished now and they're going to need repolishing again um, but uh, for ages I've been looking for something to a way of restoring this clock um, or buying a new mechanism and you, you go on eBay and they, they want like a hundred quid just for a mechanism which seems ridiculous I wasn't willing to pay that much but uh, luckily um, my son found a clock on marketplace Facebook marketplace which was like 20 quid and it had the visible escapement oh, well, I've got to have that and uh, that just got delivered to me and um, what I'm going to do is kind of use the mechanism from that and put it onto this and then I've got a spare case. So here's the clock in question. It's only a small thing. Uh, this one's just above 30 centimetres high. And it's a nice clock. You know, it's, it's no, nothing wrong with it. And any other time I would have restored this clock on its own and just been happy with it. But at the moment, um, all I'm seeing is all of this stuff here. So the uh, mechanism on this is exactly the same as the other clock. It just had a lot. The other one had just had a larger dial. So the mechanism was attached to a larger dial. But um, we've got this sort of visible escapement in there. Um, and pretty much in good condition, other than when I turn it around. The only difference between this mechanism and the one that I've got over there was that this one had a bell on it as opposed to a gong. But I think I'll be able to convert that anyway. 
and I do believe the pendulum is inside there as well. It's quite shiny. It could, I haven't taken it out yet, so you're seeing it as I'm seeing it. Um, this one could have been serviced not so long ago for all I know, but it's, so it's looking quite intact. So, as I say, I'll take this apart and uh, give it a service anyway. And then marry up the bits with the other mechanism to get it to chime on a gong and uh, hopefully get that big clock working again. So, first thing I'll do is put a couple of rubber bands across it. So that I can undo the mechanism, undo the straps from behind. That's it. So that holds the back in and holds the front in. So I can undo it without fear of the front part dropping out and breaking another pivot. Undo these two screws. which tighten onto the straps which sandwich the back bezel with the front bezel uh, onto the clock case. This one has got a, it's spinning. Someone's put a nut on the back of this, of this screw, which would tell me that they've worn the thread on the strap, which isn't a problem, because I could really recut, really I could recut really the thread if I wanted to. I'll just, Got the pliers there to hold the nut. Stop it from spinning. Let's see if I've loosened it enough now. Yeah. to that going through the strap put that on the side so the second thing is now I can support the front let that fall at least that ain't breaking get rid of the elastic bands and as I show you around front ease that out normally you drop the pendulum take the pendulum off but in this case there wasn't a pendulum and look at that that's fairly clean it's in really good condition if I was lazy I'd get away without even servicing it but I'm going to service it anyway so just say so, oh sure see a pendulum somewhere yeah I can feel it there's a pendulum right so what I look for is the numbers on the pendulum that you can see here match up with the numbers that are on the clock which in this case, oops, there you go. In, in this case, they don't match up. So that tells me that this isn't the original pendulum for the clock. That doesn't mean to say that it doesn't work properly. It just means it wasn't the one that was built with the clock. And I'm gonna use this pendulum anyway, because I'm gonna just suppose that it was working fine before we bought it. 
truth is I haven't even tried to wind this clock up so I don't know what the condition of it was. Ah, hey look, there's even, remember I said there works off of a bell, there's the bell. If my plans for modifications to make that uh, the new mechanism work with a striker that hicks a gong doesn't work, then I will just uh, make the big clock work off the bell, which is still quite cute, to be honest with you. So to begin with, I'm going to remove the hands. pushing out this little pin in the center of the hands. I've got to demagnetize these. There's a dome shaped thing. I've really got to demagnetize these things. That's the hands removed. Next, we'll remove the dial. That's done by removing these pins, usually three of them. And the way I do it is I get my pliers behind the back end of it. I'm trying to do this while I'm on camera, but it's hard. Um, and sort of press it out. But in this case, this pin is a bit too long to be able to do that. be ready to separate. Now I won't be needing this bit. Oh, I'll need that bit. I won't be needing this bit for that clock because the aperture on the other clock is much larger. Let's get rid of the bell holder. And what I do with these things, you'll see, you may notice that I've, um, if this camera would even bother to focus, I've shaped the end of my pliers to a point um, just to make things easier to get at. And what I do is I grab one end behind, let me get you a close up. So to remove one of these pins I go from behind the thin end and on the post and squeeze gently, careful it doesn't go flying, and that just releases the pin. Slide it out. Oh, I've got to go and demagnetize them. And that's off. Oh, 
Uh, there's still some tension in the springs there. I'll be a bit careful with that. So I'm just holding on to the escape with my fingers for now. I'm just going to let that wind down by itself. The bit I don't want to break. That's so fragile. Alright, so now I want to remove this plate. really clean really clean um, as I say to the point of if I was lazy I wouldn't have to service this I, I say I could get away with servicing this but nevertheless it's always good practice to service it so what I do now as always and I encourage you to always do is take lots of pictures from different angles different angles are important because um, the way something looks from overhead is not what it looks like when you're looking at it from the side I'm um, looking for any particular marks um, which should correspond with each other which I can sort of see now you may not be able to see this but I'm going to and zoom in on it anyway. I don't know if you can see that that little mark on there on that wheel will correspond to a mark on this wheel underneath here which you can see and uh, if you don't get them right the clock won't strike properly. As I said, I like to take as many pictures as I can, trying to get, there you go, another picture, um, trying to make sure that when I put these clock together, the marks are all lined up the way they were before I took it apart. Got my letdown tool to release any tension from the main springs. There's quite a bit on that one. I 
not so long ago when I didn't have a uh, mainspring uh, letdown tool I was trying to do this with a key and I'm doing it I mean like really dangerous stuff you know take your fingers off these springs are powerful I think one more photograph for my purposes here French clocks are generally all the same but I've found that some of them have got like quirky little differences is I've never seen uh, and you, you guys who watch me regularly know I don't know the names of all these things and I'm not going to try and look them up to make myself look clever um, whatever this part is um, I've never seen one with that nice curve on there before which is unusual what well, unusual for me so let's see if we can get normally find a little place you could slide your screwdriver underneath to remove these bits but not in this case so I'm just going to use a, a little blade to gently ease underneath it and lift it off its post Work it from both sides so that it rises up evenly. That's it. As you'll see, um, you've got these two little posts on there, and if you try to yank it up from one side, you'll end up bending one of those. And you don't want to do that. Can I go in a bit closer? I just wanted to show you what I meant about marks corresponding. You see these two wheels here? You've got the mark on there and a the mark on there, and they line up. And then this mark on there will go sort of. matched up with that there and take pictures as I go along
And also, uh, good practice is to, if you're not sure about your screws, is just pop the screw out. Where are we? There you go. Pop the screw out, lay it next to the part you've just taken it off of, and photograph it. And then you've got something you can reference. Again with the two little posts. Pivots on this clock are very, very fine. Um, unlike most of the other gone off shot there. Yeah, unlike um, most of the other, well, I'm going to break that one, unlike all the other French clocks that I've been doing, um, these are extra fine. The only time I've come across them as fine as that is when I did the Jappy Ferris, um, I'll say that word, um, but yeah, when I did that clock, the um, pivots were very fine. Something else uh, I want to show you, and a lot of uh, clock repairers and people who do service do this. Again, it might be very hard to pick up on the camera. Even if I try, try an extra light. No, made no difference. Okay, well, basically, see. See these parts here. This this is all to do with um, locking the the mainspring. Again, don't ask me for technical terms, but whatever they whatever they are, it's nice to keep the bits together and not mix them up and not sort of use that wheel over that side and then that bit over this side. Whatever. You know, it's nice to keep bits together. So what a previous clockmaker has done here. He's put two little dots on the end of there, two little dots on the end of there, and somewhere, and possibly underneath this wheel, will be another two little dots, which will mean that these three components go together. It's just, it's nice to keep these bits together because they wear together and they've worn in and married up really nicely over the years. And you start changing bits over, it's not that it's not going to work, but it might not be as. Um, tight as it should be. Uh, and I've even noticed, uh, I've got to mention this, he's even put um, a couple of little dots on the actual screws as well, so you can't go wrong with there. This would have been a good clockmaker, whoever restored this. Don't know what they're going to say when this clock next goes for a service. Like, who the, who the hell did this job? Again, I'm photographing the those few components I just took off. I'm just photographing them, um, photographing them together with their screws, so that I can identify what screws go where. I'm looking for marks on on that little piece there I just took off, but there wasn't any. Yep, yeah, and 
send out this I've got to show you because it makes me feel clever I was right underneath this wheel two little dots which makes that little bundle go together um, looking at this there's oil on here which has started to go a little bit gungy so you know what it might not have been as the service on this might not have been as recent as I initially thought it takes a while for the oil to start to congeal Being careful not to scratch the plate as well. Not that it gets seen, but it's just sort of personal pride when you're doing a job like this. This one's a bit stubborn. Having said that, you know, even though these clocks were built or whatever 120 130 years ago they're built with such tight tolerances like me trying to lever it from one side is just locking it in it needs to come up evenly These things are invaluable um, if you're going to service an old clock. Um, it'd be very hard to to do this otherwise. I know some people put them on cardboard boxes and things like that, but it does make it difficult. Whereas with these, they literally just tighten in. Three of them. There you go, and that's sort of held together nicely. Now I can just remove these final pins. lift off the back of the clock there you go very nice too I'm just uh, checking the plate here for bushings whether it's ever been bushed but no it hasn't done this is all original which is nice now again a good opportunity to take some more photographs as I say from different angles as well as top you want to do the sides because sometimes it's hard to tell what wheel goes where and the only thing you can identify it by are the pinions 
So you want to catch them in sort of 3D from a slight angle as opposed to 2D from up above. Right, that done. I can now go about removing all the little bits. So this final one has got that little flag. Yeah, this one's got that little flag on the end of it. And do is just grab it with the tweezers and pull on the wheel until it pops off. Got to be a little bit careful with this because you don't want it to you don't want to bend the arm here. It. There you go, and this is still in one piece. Good luck with putting that back together. So all these bits will go for cleaning. I just run them through an ultrasonic. I do have a dedicated watch part cleaner. Um, but I think the ultrasonic is good enough. I've managed to get everything cleaned and it's come out nice and spotless. But there's been a bit of a problem because one of these um, pallet stones, tiny little thing there, and I'll zoom in for you. There you go. So this little pallet stone has come off of here. Now, the only reason I could imagine that's happened is through the heat and possibly the vibration of the ultrasonics, but I've never had that happen to me before. They're normally um, glued in there with shellac, and I have got a bit of shellac. The headache part of this is getting these st uh, or stones, these are metal um, particular ones, at the, exactly the right angle. And there is a bit of a science to it, and I don't know. I've done it once before, trial and error, and kept on moving it until I got it right, and then the clock ran forever. But uh, I can't explain to you how I'm going to do this, so I don't even think it's worth me trying to do this uh, on video, because I'm just going to kind of blag it, really, and that wouldn't be right. So if I get this clock working... <laughs> Uh, happy days for all of us. But meanwhile, I can start putting everything back together. First of all, we'll drop this in. I'll do is just t touch of oil in there. Drop that in. Next, this piece. The thing with restoring clocks, it's quite therapeutic. And as long as you take lots of photographs, it's like 
putting a jigsaw puzzle together but the price is greater because with a jigsaw puzzle you put it all together and then or you spend like a week putting a thousand piece jigsaw together and then like maybe leave it on a dining table for a week or so before dismantling it and uh, sending it up into the loft never to be seen again whereas with this clock making clock repairing you're taking something apart that's got a functional use so when you've restored it and put all the bits back together and it works you've got it there for life and something to be proud of while the jigsaw puzzle sitting up there in the loft uh, now something I didn't mention which I should have done is when you take off these barrels let me zoom out you want to be sure to put the barrel back in the place it came out of um, you've got one for the striking part and the other one for the actual clock itself so again luckily enough for me because I forgot to mark it um, the previous restorer watchmaker clock maker he marked a little s on here which is for the strike and I know that pops in there I'm gonna have to move that leg and that one goes in there now with these springs I Oh, both these legs are in the way I haven't bothered taking the springs out of their cases I opened them up and had a look um, they look clean from what I could see and nicely oiled I didn't feel it was worth disturbing them but mainly because the general condition of this clock was in good order but uh, sort of nine times out of ten, it's going to lean over. I will open up the barrels, clean or even change the main springs. But in this case, as I said, I didn't. So um, here's quite an important point which I didn't know, I only recently found out and how I've ended up getting some of these clocks right sometimes makes me laugh. Uh, important point I should mention to you. So we have this wheel here, the one with all the little spiky bits on it. And if you look on the top part, remember when I said there were markings, there's a little kind of I've gone out a shot there. It's a little drill mark right there. Now that drill mark, let me clear this area slightly. So that little drilled little divot has got to correspond with, so that's going to mesh with this wheel. And what we're looking at what we're looking for and it's hard to see it, where we've got these pinions one of them is filed down well, I really want to explain this because it is so important so excuse the rubbish drawing this rubbish drawing represents this and you've got these pinions here which are these 
these things here. Um, terrible drawing I know, but what we're looking for on these leaves, I think it's about seven of them in fact, one of them is ground off like that, so it goes that shape. Whereas all the others are sort of fully finished if you know what I mean. It would make more sense when you come to doing one of these things and you look at this particular wheel, you'll see um, one of them has just been filed down slightly and you want to make the this wheel, this one which is um, move over a bit and it's got that little divot on it you want that and that's the spike that comes out of it uh, so you want that little divot to line up with that chamfer as I say it might not make that much sense now but when you're um, putting a clock back together the penny will drop as it did with me um, I'd heard about it and never quite understood it it was only just quite recently when uh, when my striking wasn't working on time properly and things like that um, I just to mess around and do the clock and re, you know jiggle around and eventually get it right because you know what you've got sort of seven chances really um, of getting it right so you do eventually get it right but at least if you know what you're looking for you should get it right first time right it's Saturday night it's just gone seven I promise to take my wife and my daughter's out for an Indian which I'm gonna do now and I'll be back tomorrow on Sunday to finish this clock off. Until then, enjoy your weekend. Right, it's Sunday morning. I had a lovely curry last night, chicken gel frazzy, my favourite. And it's only local down the road, within walking distance. So, winning all round. It's uh, now Sunday morning and I've uh, been thinking about this thing I'm uh, trying to explain to you about the pinion and I started doing drawings and the drawings were crappy and I'm better at woodwork than I am at drawing so um, I knocked up this little thing because I think it's that important that um, everyone should know and understand this only purely because I've only just found out and it's one of those sort of bloody hell, I wish I'd have known that earlier moments. So uh, let me show you what I've made up. Oh, you can see my rubbish drawings here, that was going to confuse the hell out of you. So, remember what I was saying about the pinions here and one of the tooth being ground down as a marker? Well, here is an expanded view of this. Now, where you've got your pinion leaves, on one end, you should see, and uh, there it is, ground down. And that's what you're looking for. And that's, that's the one that's gonna mark, uh, meet up with the little marking that you've got, the little, divot that you've got in that wheel so basically that and that will meet up and then you know you've got everything synchronized without messing around too much so uh, yeah that took me about five minutes to put together and uh, a lot easier than a rubbish drawing so with that out of the way um, can continue to put the clock together again. So place that wheel in there, getting the the little divot marked up or in place ready for meeting up with the cog. So with that all explained, uh, we can carry on putting bits back in. 
So we'll go in with this one first of all. I've got the divot roughly facing the direction I want it to be in and with this it's hard to see my eyesight ain't great I may need to use a loop for this is to find the chamfer on the pivot exactly where that should be. Put this one in again. And then finally this one. My eyesight, my eyesight isn't brilliant. And that will just lock everything together. Next, we'll put in this. I think it's called a regulator. Sits in there. This will go in here. little notches to show you what side of these little spring bars they're meant to go on. You want to get those right. And now we're ready for the plate to go on top of that. Just say so this is where the fun begins. located isn't easy it is annoying it's frustrating and um, is it, there we go like now all sorts of things are happening it, without trying to use a pun it's gonna wind you up so what I do is Hold the plates together lightly and using my tweezers literally try to get the pivots located one by one. It's a little bit of like a game of Jenga, you got to be really careful otherwise it will just falls apart again. Yeah, I usually turn the camera off when I'm doing this bit because I really lose my temper with it. Like, 
I'm not the most patient person in the world. I'm terrible. I'm like a baby. Tantrums. Um, but he's nice once you've got it repaired. Or once you've got the... But it is nice once you've got the plates together. Right. I'm going to put all the pins in now and carry on putting the last few bits on now. Just put a little bit of uh, oil underneath here. Now remember what I said about the markings. making sure as best you can to keep all the parts together Just added these bits, I forgot to put the camera on record, uh, nothing technical about that. Get this wheel in there. I'm terrible with tweezers. That goes in. That goes in. The little divot bits lining up.
just lining up the divots the little ground out hole on this wheel as well so that they're all in line I'll oil all this up properly um, before I put it all in the case. Um, forgot to press record but all I've done is put this plate on now and secured it with three pins and now I can put this face on go somewhere like that So, um, off camera, I've uh, put in that um, steel pallet stone back in again. Didn't think there was any value in me showing you what I did because I'm purely just guessing. Um, it's, as I said, there are sciences like what angle it should be sitting at and whatever else. So, you know what, for the purpose of this video, um, I'll just put it in and I'm going to mess around with it until I get it right eventually but for now it's glued in who knows you know I could be really lucky and it works first time but remains to be seen
I'm pretty much at this stage where I can put it in the test stand and see how it runs. I should have tested it. I should have tested it before I started the stupid job. So, what that is telling me is that the main spring is broken. I opened up the top of the cap and it looked fine and uh, I thought well there's no need to take them out and clean them it looks all pretty good condition it kind of tells you should shouldn't leave any stones uncovered when you're trying to service a clock because it's so time consuming that when you've done as far as this and I've now got to go back take it all apart and have a look at what's going on with the spring I don't feel like finishing this today, so I probably won't. Taken out the barrel. Why didn't I check this? Look. The arbor isn't catching on to the spring, so that will tell me that it's broken bloody looked at that so basically I've got to open it up take the spring out and have a look and see what's going on so take the spring out of its case uh, easiest way is get a nice piece of wood and then just whack it like that. There's a cover off. So looking in there, first look, look make you think that there's nothing wrong with it, but. All it is, is that that part of the spring, in this case, needs to be closed up a bit more, so that it grabs onto this little hook. This could be a really easy fix for me. Um, Let me have a quick try. I've got myself a pair of these round nosed pliers and what I'm going to try and do is give this a bit of a curve without snapping it. done it there you go that's done it put the cap back on Yep, a 
as simple as that. This can go back in the clock now. Right, uh, let's test this out. Slightly out of beat. After a few start and stops, um, I realised that the escape wasn't going round, which uh, made me realise it's something to do with the pallet stone which I um, shellacked in. In any case, it didn't take much for me to sort this problem out. Um, I undone one of those screws there, um, adjusted the wheel slightly, and it's working and you can see from behind it it's running lovely got perfect beat I'm just going to leave this on test now overnight and tomorrow possibly maybe even later today if my wife lets me I'm going to um, put the dial on and put it onto the big clock I've had the clock on test now for 24 hours and it seems to be running lovely. I'm happy with that. The problem that I've run across now is I'm trying to get this mechanism to fit into a larger clock, which means that it had a larger face. As, and I'll just show you in comparison that. So in order to get this larger face onto the clock, it needs to go onto this larger dial ring, as opposed to this smaller one, which would have been fine, but when I go to put this onto the clock mechanism itself, these three locating pins are not matching up with the holes on here. So with the smaller dial holder, that fits in nicely, perfectly. As I say, these three locators meet perfectly inside those three holes. Whereas when I try to put this one on, the holes are all off so uh, somehow and I've not worked out I've got to try to make these holes uh, make what well, basically make these locators make holes on this plate fit locators that will fit perfectly in place to that not worked out how I'm going to do that yet <clears throat> It could be a case of re-drilling out new holes on here, which is something I didn't really want to do. And it literally takes them to the edge of this plate. And it would take quite accurate, accurate drilling. And I don't know if I'm up to that standard. Alternatively, I could just um, take these off of here and then place this on top of there and remark it with the right holes. Again, not sure. I'm sure a clockmaker would tell me the right way to do this. And possibly there is no right way to do this is probably one of those things that real clock makers look at and think oh, why are you doing that butcher job but I've got to make it work so either way it's going to happen What I've done is I've centered this ring 
again onto the larger plate. <coughs> Clamped it in place. I'm going to use uh, one of these to start off. This is what I use to center the, uh, the drill holes for hinges. I'm hoping this, this will sort of help me center the hole. On the plate at least to begin with it's kind of left a little divot in there which is good enough remove that now I've got three marks to drill on to I've got my three marks and I can begin drilling. I'm going to go through with a small drill to begin with and then uh, another one slightly larger after that. the excess now in theory One of them's a little bit loose, but in theory, and I'm going to try this on the mechanism now, it should work. Right, I had to do a bit of fiddling off camera, mainly because I was just losing my temper, I've got to be honest, um, but I've got them located in now. I think what I'm going to do is use a little bit of uh, low melting point solder to fix these pillars in place and get on with finishing off this clock because it's getting boring now. Just adding a little bit of flux there and I'm going to use low melting point solder and I hope that this will do the trick. Right, so th this part is finally finished. So now it just leaves me to put the dial on. stage of this clock is now just to put it into this lovely big case and what am I looking for unfortunately there's no back cover when I had this clock when it came to me it came without a back cover so I'll just put this ring on for now and eventually I'll source something to uh, seal up the back properly. Now what I did, which um, I sort of, at the time I didn't feel myself doing it because I was just trying it out, I've managed to put the original hammer on the clock 
so that it will hit the gong if it's in the right position. I might have to adjust it a little bit. Um, I've got to admit, I do prefer the gong than a bell. So, that being on there. I won't tighten it up too much at this stage because I'm going to still need to get it into beat. So uh, I hope those of you that have managed to last through the length of this video have enjoyed it, learned something or even want to just drop me a message to tell me the right way of doing things. I'd be very happy to hear from you all and I will look forward to seeing you on my next video and I've got a couple of clocks down there which need uh, fixing up so uh, hopefully I have another video out for you soon. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like if you liked it um, or slate me off if you didn't like it and subscribe if you could as well for the next videos.